It's a pristine atoll ring that only just breaks through the surface of the South Pacific, an idyllic dot in Melanesia. The people of the Carterets live from the sea and what tiny land they have. 2,000 islanders squeezed into just over half a square kilometre. The islanders may have had little impact on the outside world, but they claim the outside world is destroying them. They say they are doomed, and global warming is to blame. The island's sinking. We do see with our own eyes that our islands are sinking. We love the place, we love the islands. But it's sad to see this island going finish. The people of the Carterets are desperate. Lacking in food, their livelihoods destroyed. 400 years of occupation is about to end. While the best scientific minds in the world argue whether sea levels are rising by millimetres or centimetres, here predictions mean nothing. The damage has already been done. What's happening here is extraordinary. Since the 1950s, the sea has risen at a phenomenal rate, and no one can explain it. The Carteret people are at war with the sea. The biggest island, Han, is less than a kilometre long and ringed with broken sea walls. The islanders built rock and clam barriers in a futile effort to hold back the rising seas. Island chairman Andreas Rubin's ancestors arrived here centuries ago, but his own children will be the last of the family to be born here. We are right where my uh, grandfather's house was and the saw lines was out from my grandfather's house, was out uh, about 18 meters. So the shoreline used to be another, 18, be another to 18 meters. 18 to 20 meters right. out there. Yeah. And out there, there was uh, coconut trees and some other food gardens. The people can live off the land no longer. Swan taro, breadfruit and banana used to be part of a balanced diet for the islanders. Now the sea water that washes into the gardens at high tide has destroyed everything. This is the garden of mother of three, Teresa Hetsy. Fruit once flourished, now all that's left is coconut trees. It means that I will have no banana now to eat, and I will eat uh, coconut only, without banana, because the sea spoils my garden. Fallen coconut trees litter the beaches everywhere, their roots eroded by the rising seas. At low tide, you can see where the gardens used to be along with the stumps of coconut trees that grew here only 20 years ago. At high tide, the trees are completely swamped. At the moment now, the sea rises and washed away the roots of the coconut trees. The coconut cannot be a, a big fruit, only small ones.
As day breaks in the Carteret's lagoon, a supply ship from Bougainville arrives at the outer reef. This battered ship has no anchor and has engine trouble. But the islanders are only interested in what's on board. The emergency rations of rice won't go far, but it's all that can be unloaded from a drifting ship. The ship doesn't come, the people just go hungry, as uh, usually is the case. Bougainville's Minister for Atolls is on board too. Tehu Pass is about the last person these people want to see because of what he's come to tell them. It's an island of myself. I feel very sorry with my people. Morning through. I feel for them. Speaking from the bottom of my heart, I am indeed very sorry that uh, uh, the situation has to turn out this way. The rice shipment has brought relief from a monotonous diet. But to raise a nose, it won't last with the extra hungry mouths of her extended family. And if not rice, we'll just live on coconut only. Van Hill! We just can eat the coconut only with fish. Island chairman Andreas Rubin takes me on a tour of the five other tiny islands in the chain. The destruction is striking. If there was any doubt that the sea levels were rising, you only have to look here at the island of Huaini. This used to be one island, but as the locals will tell you, about 15 years ago, the rising seas began to slice right through the middle of it. The high tides never let up, and now the island is completely divided. Huaini 1 and Huaini 2. Remarkably, three families managed to survive on fish and coconuts on an island the size of a football field. Selena Netoy has given birth to seven children on the island, but fears her days living here are numbered. Oh, it's just uh, getting closer and closer to the sea. The sea is coming closer to us. Maybe one day a tidal wave will come and just sweep every one of us out. Our houses and everything, our kids. So we never know when this will happen. Only God knows when this will happen. The atoll's minister delivers the news these people don't want to hear. Plan he must have now, because situation he come up in this. So moving holy meeting. Only a fraction of the population has turned out to listen to Tehu Pass's prediction that by 2015 the Carterets will be underwater. Program blow move, he must move. Who's that? He like stop, you stop. That's all program. The majority of the population of the island now are willing to move, especially when they experience the, the sort of situation they face on the island. These people are about to become environmental refugees. The plan is to shift 10 families at a time to a new life in Bougainville, offering them small plots of land that they can cultivate. It's not quite their home though, is it? It will be not quite their home, but uh, it will be a new place that uh, they will have to accept. The tribal chiefs of the Carterets are facing the most momentous decision of their lives. They've gathered to talk about the evacuation of their ancestral home. You know Poret uh, Longstop Island? Me know Poret. Suppose island is me lose, me do me lose. Me lose one time my land. For this elder, the decision not to go will split his family. Morris Rubin's son, Andreas, is the young leader who'll supervise the relocation. 
<laughs> well, me feel him uh, sorry, Lick Lick, because me no like go out without my father. Why me force him long? Why me play my swana? Why me look out him long up? The Big Island, as they call it, is only 100 kilometres away, but it's a world away from the peace and quiet of the Carterets. A bitter civil war over mining and money claimed 10,000 lives. And while it's quieter now, law and order is still a problem in the new autonomous region of Bougainville. I was used to an island life all of a sudden I was thrown into um, having to adjust to living on mainland when they are hungry. They Ursula Rakova left the Carterets for the Big Smoke several years ago and now has the job of coordinating the move of her fellow islanders. If I had a miracle to perform, I wouldn't bring my people here. Law and order is, is a big concern to us, um, especially when we are coming from a a peaceful community and coming into an area that um, we have not lived before. So law and order is a, a big concern to us. The islands are being squeezed, not only by the oceans, but by the people who live here. There are too many islanders to be sustained by its diminishing gardens. The relocation will thin the population before this place becomes completely uninhabitable in the next decade. There will still be people here on the island until the last tree from the island is down. The only time to evacuate everybody will be when the last tree goes down, meaning total was down and only the reef remains. You'd think with what's happening here, this place would be swarming with scientists and experts. But the people will tell you they've never ever had a visit from a study team from anywhere in the world. For all the questions here, there are no answers. Without exception, the people here blame global warming, especially those hardest hit on the tiny island of Pule. For the last 10 years, we haven't planted anything in this area because... Chief of the Bernard Toonham takes me through island. gardens ruined yeah. by seawater. Pure salt water is bubbling from underneath and it has spoiled the, uh, the area which we've been planting swamp taro and other crops. Here at high tide, the water doesn't just breach the sea walls, it seeps up from beneath the ground. The pools left behind are a haven for malaria carrying mosquitoes. We get malaria and many of our children are affected by malaria and so this diarrhea and other tummy aches and headache all this comes up because of stagnant water <laughs> there is no electricity here let alone television or the internet But as isolated as these people are from the industrialised world, they know enough about its excesses. The melting of the ice and the rise of the sea level, that's why the island maybe in a few years time will be covered with salt water or maybe submerged by the sea. For the second time in as many weeks, another shipment of rice arrives. The islanders can hardly believe it, but they know the ship will not return for many months. 
There are no regular aid drops by a financially stricken Bougainville government, and these people are completely ignored by international aid agencies. They feel a forgotten people. I really miss the place. I miss the sea, the fish and the coconuts, the palm trees. It is a home to me. I do belong to the island. I feel sort of an island. If sea levels rise as they have done over recent decades, the Carteret Islands will become the first inhabited atoll to be swallowed by the ocean. For many, it's too late to worry about how or why this is happening. The islanders know this is unstoppable, whatever the force that's dragging them into the sea. <laughs> 